that is how, I guess, I defeated the Pete, and how we got locked in here waiting for your return. Not through brute force, but cunning. No glorious battle, no heroic quips or monologues, just the raw brutality of a steel fan shredding through the chitinous armor of my foes and rending his and or her flesh asunder. That's about how it went. <laughs> I'll live. I guess we have our little friend over here to thank for that. Well, sitting around and moping won't solve any of our problems. We must plan and take action, and take responsibility for forging our own destinies. But luckily, we still have some hopium, and I was able to retrieve the Sentinel's body. Abathis, you... you were able to get the Soul Stone, right? Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, yes, that's great! Now, of course, due to the situation, I've set up a quick workbench in the back. I still prefer working next to the waterfall, but... Uh, yeah, I've been doing some research, and I have found some very useful tool to expand our rig and make animating so much easier. So much easier, in fact, that I wanted to take some time to share it with everyone. This will make animating so much easier and so much better to do. And when we're done, we can finally move on to animating, take back the aisles, reclaim the towers, and make our games look real nice. All right, let us... So last time we worked on rigging our characters in Blender, we used a basic Rigify rig to get everything set up and ready, running, and ready to go. If you missed the episode, it will be right here on the screen, or it will be in the description if you're on another platform. I'm looking at you, bitch shoot. <clears throat> but first, I would like to really show you how to get some IK set up. Yes, I did say last video that we would be working with animation, but I just figured out how IK works, and I'm so excited to, to show you and how, how it all works, and oh my gosh, it was such a pain to, to learn it. But now that I got it all set up and ready to go, I wish to show you, because it's going to help us. Because beforehand, uh, I was doing a bunch of animations, and my feet were sink through the ground, and it was a, a pain in the butt to fix, and I would like you to avoid said stress all together and it will make your animations look real nice and i think that you'll enjoy it so without further ado let's get started with setting up ik's also known as inverse kinematics i hope you can feel the excitement so with our model at the ready let's get started by making sure that we are in object mode Select our model, and we will be hiding it by pressing H. This will get it out of the way for now, and we will do this for all of our other meshes as well. Now your bones should be laid bare and exposed to the elements. We could even play a little jingle, like a xylophone. Let's now select the bones and enter into edit mode, and start adding some IK bones. We can do this by hitting tab. We'll be working on one side today. Unfortunately, since I have everything already set up to work with my mesh, I would rather not erase bones and flip them. You can if you want. Once you get one side done, you can erase the bones, copy, flip them over, and everything should work just fine. But for the learning process, I'm just going to redo some of the steps, just to make sure it's sunk into my head even better. And I recommend this because it's one of the best ways to learn. It's also not terribly hard. But don't worry your pretty little toes, my friends, because we can save ourselves a lot of time by taking advantage of the mirror function in the bone edit mode. Yes, everything will be set up so once we finish one side, it's pretty much a uh, quick fix. It's almost like we're hackers or something. So if you don't already have the menu up, do yourself a favor and hit the N key to bring up the tools menu. Next, select the Tool tab, and right there under the Options drop-down menu, there is the X-axis mirror button. Take that, and we will be all set and ready to go. 
Next, we're going to snap our camera to one side by hitting the 3 on our numpad. Or, of course, you could just use the directional pointers up here at the top. I'll be on my character's left-hand side, and we'll be setting up two bones here. One will help us control the leg, and the other one will tell our knee which way to point. And as a consequence of this new setup, we will make sure that our feet stay firmly on the ground. If we want. For our first control bone, let's make one for the foot. Select the tail end of the shin bone and press E to extrude it out and drag it just about here. Since this is a control bone and not a deformation bone, it really doesn't need to be connected to the rig at all. So let's go ahead and do that by selecting the new bone and hitting Alt P and hit Clear Parent. This way it's separate from the rig. Next we're going to add the knee constraint bone. So let's move our cursor about here by pointing our mouse in this direction away from the knee. Shift, right click. And there you go. At least that's what I need to do. You may be using left click. Uh, either way, it probably doesn't matter because either way, we're going to add a bone by hitting Shift A and, of course, add bone. Rotate, move it around by hitting the R to rotate and the G to move it around. Okay, now let's edit these bones so Blender knows that it's not going to deform the mesh whatsoever. With the neat control bone selected, let's go over here to the context tab over here on the right. Down here, untick the deform box. This way the new bone does not affect the mesh at all, or at least directly. It only influences the rig. Next, we need to give it a proper name. So let's go right up here and rename it to PoleTarget.L. And of course, there's this other one we made. So let's go down here and also make sure in the context tab that the deform box is also unticked. And of course, we are going to name it LegIK.L. As a quick side end, if we move our camera a bit, we can see, ah, look at that. Our other leg has an extra bone. It's perfect. But hold on. There is not an extra knee thingy. Well, the reason for that is that because we specifically extruded uh, from an existing bone using the X mirror uh, function, uh, it did indeed duplicate that specific bone. But unfortunately for our knee control restraint, uh, we just added a bone. Therefore, it didn't really mirror it over side because there was nothing really to duplicate but don't worry about that just yet my friends we will focus on this one knee and make it perfect that way when we do duplicate everything it will be absolutely perfect for now let's just move our knee constraint so it sits right on top of the kneecap but also away hit one on the numpad to view it from the front so we can move it around using G yes yeah, very good I'm also uh, snapping it on the x-axis by hitting G and X. You can also do the same to the Y and Z axis. It just kind of helps. All right, now that everything is named and in the right place, let's hop on over to pose mode up here to get the constraints up and running. Let's snap to the side by hitting three and then we will select the leg IK bone. Then we're going to shift click the leg here, uh, just like so. You should have both selected by now. Next, we're gonna hit shift control C to bring up a little menu. Then we simply need to select the inverse kinematics option so we can set everything up. Yes, the order is absolutely important. You now should see your leg turn yellow. All right, cool, cool. Now it's time to adjust some options over here. Go back over to your context here, over here on the right, and you will see that we now have an IK tool option here. Yes, yeah, it's so nice. All right, let's go ahead and test it a bit and... Oh. Oh my, what the hell is this? <laughs> Down there, calm, calm down, calm down, calm down. Everything, everything is fine. Look, the world isn't crashing down around us. Okay, kind of mm -hmm. is, but sometimes we just things just take a little extra steps. Now, I'm sure if we put our minds to a thing and we don't ever give up, we can figure this out. Things may look bleak now, but I'm geeked up on hopium, and my dear, I will not be defeated by. He just needed to change the chain length. About how many bones are in the, the chain? Oh, I guess it wasn't that bad. 
So yeah, that can sometimes happen. But it's cool, it's cool. Everything is technically working. Uh, just change the chain link to two or whatever works for you. This number primarily depends on how many bones the constraint will be affecting. Next, back over on the IK options in the constraints tab, let's add a bone target. Click on it and then we will select our meta rig. For the bone, we will select our pole target.l. Uh... Yep. Okay, so next we're going to need to correct this bit too. Assuming that you have run into this problem at all. To do this, make sure, of course, that your chain link is correct, which it is for me. If it is not correct, it would look something like this. But for our problem, all we need to do is correct the rotation as it has become twisted. Let's come up over here to the Pose Angle tab and we can play with it for just a bit. For me, it looks like it's uh, about negative 90 degrees off. So I just type that in and BAM! It's all fixed. At least the rotation is. Alright, we are almost there. Now you'll probably notice that your knee is not pointing in the right direction. Uh, however, if you do rotate the knee pole, you'll see that it is rotating the knee. It's just probably not pointing in the right direction. All we need to do is go into edit mode and make some small adjustments, move it around just a little bit, and you'll be surprised how moving it just a little bit makes the biggest difference of all. So let's go back into edit mode and hide the pole target for now by selecting it and hitting H. Snap over to the front view by hitting 1, and we can start adjusting the top part of our shim bone. Move it around, left, right, up, down, side to side, and the knee will eventually point in the right direction. Zoom in for a tighter look, and switch over back to pose mode to check on your progress. You will find that the smallest movement can affect it in a large way, and you will keep doing it until it is perfect. And it's really not that bad, it's rather, it's rather quite easy. And finally, everything's looking good and the knee is pointing in the right direction. Now, it, the knee will bend in a weird way if the leg goes past the pole target, but we could just move the pole target and that would fix everything. So everything's good. So let's just unhide everything by hitting Alt-H. Perfect. Now, if you're okay with everything how it is, uh, you can go ahead and stop. But, uh, you know, if you want to make everything even more perfect, let's go ahead and add rotation constraints on the foot. Next, select the IK bone and then the foot bone. Then we hit, you guessed it, shit, control C and add a copy rotation constraint. Cool. Uh, the foot should now be all wonky now. Uh, we can fix this. See, nothing of value ever came with absolute ease. But then again, this is not that hard once you get the hang of it. Select the foot and go down over to the bone constraints, and we will change the space, both of them, to local with parent. This should end things rightly. Test it out, and yes! It's working! Lastly, for the foot, let's invert the Z axis so I can rotate it on the that axis correctly. Otherwise, it won't work quite how I want it to. You can do the same with all three values if you wish. So let's do this by clicking the invert box. And voila, everything on this side is all set up and ready to go. Now, if you really wanted to, you could erase the bones on that side, copy and flip them over. I did not do that, or you can do what I did and just repeat the process again so you can learn it better. Either way, there's one more thing we need to do, and that is we need to duplicate the knee pole target. So, uh, so what we can do is go back over to edit mode, hit one to snap it into the front view, select the pole target, hit control D, then X to move it on the X axis. I do this so I can just move it solely on the X axis. It helps a lot. Line it up roughly where it is on the other side, and then we're going to do is we're going to copy the name and paste it over, and we are going to change the L to an R. And of course, I just repeated all the other steps to set everything up, and it was just perfect because I already set most of the stuff up. It's pretty much just getting all the constraints up and ready to go. It's fantastic. And now, we're all ready to animate. Everything's ready to go. And finally, when I animate, it won't clip through the floor! And it all ends up being beautiful.
All right, all right. Well, it looks like we're all done here. And not a moment too soon, I think. Well, I do believe we are ready to start animating now. Hey, Arbuthus! <laughs> Sweetheart, come on, come on back. Come, oh, come on, don't be upset. Come here. Everything's fine. No, 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 no. Look, everything's gonna be fine. Look, I am almost 100% sure that everything will go smoothly from here on out. Everything is going to be fine. Everything is going to be A. Well, well everything's just gonna be... Everything's just gonna be all... A-okay. Oh.